Hello, good evening. It is Wednesday, hump day, and it is 9 p.m. in Virginia where I am, and I'm just getting set up. I have my makeup on. So, I think there's some folks here. I'm trying to make sure that I see if I can't see what's going on. So, if you are on, then give me some likes, some thumbs up, some wows, some frowny faces, whatever it is you want to give me. And we'll get going in a second. So, I know Penny's here. I haven't done, I'm I'm really great in groups, but I haven't done uh, events too much. So this is what I is called failing forward, because you kind of figure it out as you go. So I am looking in my discussion in my group. There I am. Okay. So I am looking in my discussion. I in guess my there's a delay group. in there. There I am. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I put on makeup. I am so not a makeup person. So I, in fact, I put some stuff on my eyebrows. I am so eyebrow challenged. Um, and it, they didn't look good. So I had to, that's why I was a couple minutes late because I was like taking my makeup off of my, uh, <laughs> my eyebrows. So anyways, welcome to my webinar from feeling unfulfilled to fabu feeling fabulous. So I wanted to talk about that. I'm going to go over my story. So I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes. I am going to focus on three particular areas of my life. So I'm going to spend try to do 10 minutes each. Uh, and sometimes I tend to maybe go on a little tangent, so I'm going to try. I'm, that's one of the reasons I have my computer here, so I'm going to try to stay on track. And then at the very end, I will open it up to questions, Q&A, so anybody can answer or ask questions. And I even have a little prizes. So for people um, who are brave enough to ask questions, I don't know if you saw my um, post yesterday or the day. I don't know when I posted about it, but I have this... The uh, fan for my hot flashes to do on my iPhone. And so I ordered some really cute ones in different colors. So I've got blue ones. Let me just show you real quick before we get started. So here's a blue one. It's a little fan and I've got lime green and pink ones. So I encourage you to ask questions. If you ask questions, you'll get a little fan reward. Um, as long as I might have to do a drawing. Depends on how many people ask questions. All right. So I want to start with age 13. So the purpose of this, this webinar is to share with you how you can make a change and how um, I, th there's three distinct periods in my life where I have gone with my gut basically, and it really changed the trajectory of my life. And so I want to inspire people to not be afraid to make changes because change is really, really scary, And um, but change can be so positive. Once you're on the other side of change, um, change is hard when you go through it, but once you're on the other side, it's so rewarding, and the journey that led you there is so worth it. And so I want to welcome you to my event, and I know that I have some of my coaches here, so hello everyone, I'm so glad you're here, and if you are invited here by my coaches, that is awesome. So anyways, I want to start with when I was, hey Penny, I want to start with when I, I was 13 years old, so I, I, that was a big turning point in my life. Uh, when I turned 13, um, I, my birthday's in February, I'm about to turn, I'm gonna, I'm 57, um, I always add a year, so I'm not gonna do that this year, um, but, uh, it was March of that year, 1972, and I remember, um, I was a, I was a, 
older, I mean, sorry, younger than most people in my grade. And I, uh, I, so as a freshman in high school, so I had just, you know, that was like my second semester of my freshman year in high school. And all of the, the friends that I had were starting to date boys and boys weren't interested in me for some reason. And, you know, I started to get like, I have a, I started to have a confidence problem. I, I felt very loved in my family, but for some reason I wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling validated in my life by the other sex because there was interest. My friends were getting interest, interest by boys, but I wasn't. And so I, back then, you know, working out wasn't a big thing and people didn't really focus on their weight as much like they do now. And so I remember one day I thought, I wonder if I'm fat. I wonder if I just, like, I'm overweight. I had no concept of that. And so I remember getting on the scales. I remember the room I was in. It was a spare bathroom. I remember the yellow linoleum floor. And I remember looking down at the scale and seeing a number, which I'll never forget. And I remember thinking, hmm, I wonder if that is is overweight. I wonder if I, you know, need to lose weight. And so I didn't go to my mother about this. I didn't go to anybody about this. It was just a feeling in my gut I had that I needed to change. I needed to change something um, because what was going on wasn't working. And so I just decided that, I, and basically the way my, my life worked was I would get up and I would have breakfast and then I would go to school and I would have lunch and then I'd get home and I'd have another meal and then I'd have dinner. So I basically had four meals because I would, you know, hang out after, after school. And so I just decided I started to really get involved with horseback riding and I got a horse. So instead of opening the refrigerator when I got home, I was active. I, I was going, doing something. I wasn't opening the refrigerator. And over the course of the next few months, I lost 30 pounds. And it was really funny because I think I periodically weighed. I don't, I don't have really vivid memories of getting on the scale except for that first time and what that weight was. 142 pounds. And I remember right before going back to school, I remember I had lost 30 pounds. I was like 112. And so I remember going back to school and people were like, oh my God, Lori, you like, you look so different. And I was like, it was so funny because I was like, I don't feel different. I feel the same. I mean, my, my clothes were a lot looser, but I probably had gone out and gotten some more clothes, but I just remember being really that like it was just a really light bulb moment that I I had done this. I had gone on this journey on my own through changing my eating habits and being more active and it made a difference and then people boys started being interested in me and started asking me out and it totally changed my life. Um and so and then from that point on, I made a promise I would never ever gain weight again. I would never, ever get to that, you know, weight again. And so I will say that it did give me a little bit of a, um, I, I was never, um, I, I, be, I became a little obsessed. I became a little obsessed with staying in shape and, and, and whatever it took to lose weight. Now, I will say I never did get bulimia. I never did get anorexia. I would just like, if I started to feel like I was gaining weight, I would like stop. I would just like, okay, I need to do something. I need to cut back on my food. I need to do whatever. And I'd go on some diet, but I, I, I never really stopped eating because I love to eat. Um, I usually would just like step up the exercise. So fast forward to 47. I'm skipping many, many years in between. You know, I had two daughters. I got married and had two daughters and gained 30 pounds each pregnancy, but lost the weight immediately. So that weight was never a problem. I always maintained a good weight. Um, except when I was in college, I did like gain that freshman 10, 15, but yeah, I got rid of it. You know, it was not a problem. So fast forward to 47, and this is totally different than weight. I'm going to talk now about where I was um, uh, kind of mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So when I got, hi, Jean, Jean Ann um, and Linda. Hey, Linda. So when I got to 47, um, I had been married 25 years, 
and my marriage was, was, uh, how can I say this? Um, my marriage was, um, from the outside, really, really great. But from the inside, it was very, um, empty. And I, um, my youngest daughter had just graduated from college and, you know, marriages, you know, take, a, we had been to counseling a couple times through the years. Um, and when we felt we were getting off track, got back on track. So, but, but in looking back on my marriage now, I feel that it was a business. It was, um, we were the CEOs of our family business and we had two children and they were our employees. And when the employees finally left their job um, of being kids, then here we were faced with this company that we really, you know, there was no passion at all for that. And um, it's great that you can find somebody that you get along with for 25 years, but um, we were both very, very empty inside. And, um, you know, I, I had, we had, you know, I had brought it up, um, you know, probably about three years. Um, so probably about the time I was 44 and, um, we weren't intimate. So, um, I'm being real here. Um, and so it was, it was sad. It was really sad. And for a while I dismissed it, you know, I dismissed it and I was like, you know, people could, ha people have it worse, you know? We, we like the same things, we go out to dinner, we have our family holidays. I loved my in-laws, I loved my, my brother and, and my sister-in-law. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to admit that you just don't wanna be in the marriage anymore. You don't wanna disappoint anybody. You don't wanna you know, upset your children. And, you know, both of our parents had come from solid marriages. So I, you know, divorce was not a word that, you know, we, like I said, we had gone to marital counseling a couple of times in our lives and dug deep and made, made things work. And so, you know, it's not like we, either of us were afraid of counseling, but so, but I just kept thinking, you know, I can understand if it's like this when I'm in my 70s. I remember having that vivid, vivid thought. And I thought, but when I'm in my 40s, when I'm supposed to be really vital and, you know, so so it was a decision to, to move on and to end the marriage, which was super, super hard. And it was not easy to have those conversations. It was not easy to tell our children. It was not easy to tell our parents. Um, I, I felt like a failure, you know, that I had, had made it work this long and then I can't like make it work any longer. Um, you know, those vows you make, but in the end, I wanted a happier life. I wanted a passionate life. And I felt that we were both empty inside and we, you know, whether we just separated for a while and then came back together and we figured that out, but we needed to have that, that separating, figuring it out. So I moved on in my life and it was very difficult, I will say, but I found true love through that process. And it was a huge risk. I, I you know, looking back, I think, you know, nobody wants to be alone. And so that's what keeps, I think, a lot of people in dead marriages. And so I'm not encouraging you to get divorced, but I'm encouraging you not to live a life that is less than passionate, not to live a life where you aren't living life to your fullest in, with a partner that you are, that A, you can be so authentic with, and B, that makes you a better person. That like just when being around that person just makes you want to do a happy dance, you know? And so anyways, it was a very difficult time. I, I am a big Oprah fan and Oprah has made a big difference in my life. And I know she talks about these like gut moments and these aha moments. And so for a long time, my gut told me that this is not right. You need to make a change. 
You know, you need to do something. Um, I wasn't living the life that I was supposed to live. I don't, I didn't think. And so I think, you know, I, 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 I got unstuck. I got unstuck and man, was it great on the other side. And so I learned a lot about myself. Um, it still wasn't easy it, it for a long time. It wasn't easy. And I felt really bad about, you know, cause it was more my decision because I, I wanted that. Um, I will say that my ex-husband and I are super, super good friends and he has remarried a wonderful woman. And so, you know, it, in the end, and I, I look back on it and I think in the end, you know, we are better off, you know, because, you know, his ex, his current wife um, was brought into the mix and my current husband was brought into the mix. And so we've like spread love further, right? By, by splitting up and, and both went on a journey um, to, to really more happiness. So then, okay, so that's 47. So 40, and so at 47, I actually rekindled with my college sweetheart. And um, it was kind of a, um, a, a door that I never really fully closed. And so I was able to reach out to him and kind of reconnect and figure out like, you know, is this a door that we should reopen? And so, and we did reopen that door and uh, it, amazingly, it, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. And so we've been married almost eight years, hard to believe, no, yeah, eight years this summer. So anyways, so I, you know, that was, you know, my, kind of my, my love journey, I guess you will, my, my 12 year, 13 year old weight journey, and then my 47 year old love journey. And then I get to my 54, I'm 54 years old. And I had been in the same career for quite some time. I checked 920, 10 more minutes. Um, I had been pretty much in the same career since I, I married my, my first husband. So, and it's a career I fell into, honestly. I, I went to college and I, um, I really wanted to be a social worker. That was what my, my, my heart was telling me is to be a social worker. But my parents, lovely parents, always giving advice, um, who were both from, they were teachers. Um, they had both gone into, my mother became a guidance counselor. My father became an assistant principal. So, hey, Penny. So anyways, um, Penny Lane, that is, not Penny Jones. Um, but anyway, so I, when I was in college and I told my mom, this is what I wanted to do, I wanted to be a social worker, she said, you're, you're not, that, you're not going to make any money. It's really depressing. And so I thought, okay, um, I won't do that then. Um, so I said, okay, I'll be a teacher just like you. So, and, and it's unfortunate when that happens because um, nowadays I think it's great that kids ha have the ability to have internships and that you take tests to see what they love to do. Clearly, I always had a passion for helping people because if I wanted to be so a social worker, that's obviously helping people. Um, and so, oh, Penny Lane is your middle name. That's so funny. Yes. So we have a Penny Lane and a Penny Lane Jones. Um, so I went into, t I, I didn't actually ever graduate from college. I ended up having an opportunity. I took a semester off and had an opportunity to teach at my dad's school for, I, I did a whole grading period. What is that? Nine weeks. And it was awful. <laughs> so I hated it. And so I ended up like not wanting to be a teacher after that. And so anyways, my, so my, my now husband, I was dating in college and we had a breakup. And so I like took the semester off and never went back. So I, I had three years of college and never went back. 
And then I met my ex-husband on The Rebound, and I, I actually was waitressing at the time, kind of between, like, what am I going to do? And then I ended up getting a job. One of my customers as a wait, waitress, um, he came in and he had a placement firm. So I ended up getting a job as a receptionist at a consulting firm and ended up moving from receptionist to uh, consultant, and the rest is kind of history. So I got got into project management, software development, and so I, I just really excelled at that. I was really good. Hi, Christine. So I was really good at my, I, I mean, I always, I, I would say I'm type A. I always wanted to do the best job, and so I worked really hard, and I ended up going to work for a small company called America Online, and um, I w went there, and there was only about 200 people. And if you remember the name, America Online became AOL, which became Time Warner. And so uh, a, a company of 200 people turned into a company of 90,000 people. Um, and I went from, and I, I had done a few different, this is, um, I started at AOL as a technical writer. I used my English skills, but I used them in the computer industry. And I became a project manager because I really liked like to-do lists and schedules and telling people what to do. So I turned from a technical writer as kind of evolution of my, my profession, became a project manager. And I, um, in seven years at AOL, I went from technical writer to vice president. So as you can see, I was a very, very gung-ho, hardworking, you know, bust your, you know, worked, workaholic kind of person. But anyways, and I really loved the, the job that I did because I love people and I was working with people, a very diverse group of people. I work with all different kinds of people um, as a project manager and I really felt like um, I was doing stuff that made a difference. You know, we made the internet like the television and the telephone and that was what our mission statement was. And so I really loved that I, I was able to do that. Um, but I will say that um, it wasn't what I do now. And what I do now is is my heart, is truly my heart. And I did not find that until I was 54 years old. So, it, I mean, I basically feel, you've got mail? What does that mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, yes, that movie, like AOL, yes. Um, I had to like make that correlation. So, yeah, that movie came out when I worked there. And, in fact, it was fun because a whole group of us got to go to the movies for the afternoon and watch it. But, anyways, so um, lots of good memories from that. But I will say that you know how you kind of, like, you're good at something and so you keep doing it. But it might not be, like, your purpose. So that's what I figured out is I, I figured out what I was good at but not what I was really brought here on earth to do and you know I some people are really lucky they find that really young um, or they follow their heart and they don't go where the money is and I went where the money is and and that's not necessarily the right thing to do because honestly if you love what you do the money will come or even if the money isn't there th th that you're so happy that you don't really care so um, we have too many things in this society anyways. And that was my, my, my first marriage was all about things. It was all about like how much you could, could accumulate. And it wasn't about what's like in here that needs to be filled up before you have all those things. And so, um, I, I married, um, at 50, remarried and I moved from the DC area, Washington DC area to Charlottesville. And Charlottesville's a very small town compared to Washington DC. So they complain about traffic here, but I don't know what traffic's like. So um so I ended up I, I still worked, I had a weird kind of schedule. I would like I worked in DC and I would like be up there three three nights a week, be down here four nights a week. So I did that for about two and a half years and I finally got a good job down in Charlottesville and continued to do the project management, software development, startup job thing until one day my daughter basically said, you know, I just signed up as a Beachbody coach and I am looking for people to be in my challenge group. Would you like to join? 
And like a good mom, I was like, sure, honey, what do I need to do? And so I said, sure, I'll join your online challenge group. I don't know what the hell an online challenge group is. So I, but I'm was I'm somebody who worked out. I, I skipped probably the gym more often than I went. And I, oh, the other thing is about two months before she asked me to go into the online challenge group, um, my younger daughter was getting married and I got on the scale and because my arms were getting really flabby, bat wingy. And um, I was really worried about wearing a dress that didn't have any sleeves. And so I was like, oh, I need to, I need to address this, so, you know. And my weight had started to creep up a little bit since I had gotten in my 50s. And I got on the scale. And you know what the scale said? 144. Two pounds more than I was that fat teenager. I was like, oh my God, I have let myself go. So that was a wake up call. That was a wake up call. So I started tracking my wake, weight on Lose It. There's an app. My daughter told me about it because she was trying to lose her baby weight and she, she was successful with that. So I lost about six pounds before the wedding and I got my arms looking pretty good just by doing push ups. And so a couple months later, I gained four pounds back. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And so she, this like the online fitness group came along. I was going to the gym some days, some days not. A lot of times tired, work all day. And so I loved this online, this online forum. Like I could, like I worked out at home here in my basement. Actually, I was in my living room at the time because our DVD player's up there. So I, I did that and I never missed a workout. It was, uh, it, the workout I did was 25 minutes a day. I never in 10 weeks missed a workout and I lost 10 inches. I only lost four pounds that first um, 10 weeks, but I lost 10 inches and I went down a dress size. And so and I started drinking Shakeology, which I didn't know what the hell Shakeology was. All I knew is that it came in a bundle with a fitness program and I'll, I'll try it. And so I always had a problem with pooping, and so my digestive system was always really screwed up. And it was because I a lack of nutrition. When you have the right nutrients, your digestive system processes correctly. And so I had too many carbs. I had not enough greens in my diet. And so all those things. And so Shakeology solved that problem for me. And so I kept drinking it because I kept pooping and I was like this is great I didn't have I used to have debilitating stomach aches those went away and then after about a month on Shakeology I was like oh my gosh my hair is thicker my hair actually and I knew that whatever was in that Shakeology was doing good stuff on my insides because my hair was so much healthier and so after a couple of months I decided okay um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing the Shakeology, and my daughter told me about, you can get this discount if you sign up as a coach. So she, when she first brought it up to me, I was like, eh, 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 that is so sketchy. I know that company is a network marketing company, and I do not like network marketing companies. I just went to a Nerium party, and it was awful. I hate that. Go away. Go away. <laughs> I, I remember in the kitchen, I told her, it is sketchy. So um, anyways, another month went by. I was paying full price. I was like, fine, because I made plenty of money to cover it. But then my daughter said, you know, mom, it's really stupid. There's no strings. You don't have, you're not obligated to buy anything or any do any coaching or whatever. And I was like, okay. She got me in a weak moment. It was right after Christmas. I'll go ahead and sign up as a coach and get the discount. And so that was it. That was it. So, you know, I'd been off for that holiday, went back to work, was doing my work thing. I, I was going to do a new program. I'd finished the, pro the first fitness program. I was going to do a new program. Still drinking my Shakeology. And one day I was sitting at my job and I thought, you know what? I would love to be a coach. That would be really fun. That's kind of like really what I always wanted to do. I thought, okay, first of all, I want to be a social worker. But then as I got more into my life, I, I thought I would have loved to have been a, like a counselor to, to like help people and like help them fix their lives and get on a better path. And so then I started thinking, gosh, I could work from home. I could 
actually retire earlier than I thought I could retire. Because right now I'm like 54 and I'm thinking I'm going to be here at this cubicle when I'm 60 and I'm going to be the old lady sitting there working at our cubicle. And I didn't want to be that old lady sitting at the cubicle. I wanted to like enjoy life. And so I really seriously was like, I am going to try this coaching thing. I think, I think this might be my exit strategy to this, like this, like this life that I've just kind of fell into. And this is going to be, this is, this is it. This is it. It was like my aha moment that this is what I'm meant to do. I think, I think this is it. And I think I feel so great. I mean, I've lost 10 inches. I'm starting a new program. I'm stronger, feeling better than I felt in so, so long. And I can help other women feel like this. So I was like, oh my, OMG, <laughs> OMG. So I had less than 200 friends on Facebook. I was only on Facebook because I was stalking my kids. And so I thought, I, why not? I'll just try it. I'll do what they tell me to do. I'll do this training. I'll figure it out as I go. And then the other thing that I thought was so cool is that I, I, if I wanted to start in any other career, I would have had to go back to school, get a degree, start from scratch all over again. Do I want to be out there pounding pavement with all those 20 somethings? No, no, hell no. I want to be my own boss and I could start earning money the day I signed up as a coach. I didn't have to wait four years for my degree. I didn't have to pay any money except for the fitness program that I wanted. So I was investing in my health and then like could earn an income. So I started to think, man, this is like, this is so great. And in a way, I always wanted to be my own boss. I had looked at a couple of franchise opportunities after I left AOL and, but it was like a couple hundred thousand dollars to invest. And granted, you get all their marketing materials and you get like, you know, you get a, like in one case, it was this kitchen dinner you prep thing and another case it was a mobile dog grooming business so and so they they you know with the that two hundred thousand dollar investment comes stuff you know like kitchen equipment or a mobile grooming van you know in the case of the dog grooming van but with this i didn't i mean the investment you know what the investment is buying a fitness program challenge pack you know and shakeology or paying $40. You could do either or. Um, and so it was like, since I already bought a challenge pack, I, it cost me nothing to sign up as a coach. So, so in, and, and the other thing that I loved about being a coach is that it makes me accountable. It makes me accountable to getting my workouts done. I have to be an example. So you bet your bippy that I'm not going to skip too many workouts. So it keeps me very focused on health and fitness. And I've learned so much. I mean, I didn't know anything about new, that's the other thing. I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a personal trainer. I had no experience, nada, except my love for the products and my knowledge of, as a customer using them. So I, it's just like sharing. This is what I love and you'll love it too. So that is kind of my story in a nutshell. Hi, Kim. I have so many ladies on here that I have met through coaching and some are on my team. And one thing about this, what my, my coaching journey has done is brought so many wonderful people into my life. So I can honestly say I was lacking for girlfriends. I have a couple of girlfriends I'm really, really close with from college, but they don't live near me. And so we don't see each other very often. And the people that I work with, uh, my coaches, even though we live all over the country, um, we get on uh, our computers and we talk and we, we get on, we see each other, we video conference with each other. And so it's like we know each other and we, we do, there are events that we can get together and, and see each other and meet for the first time. So it's pretty kind of crazy because you're like, oh my God, I like, I know you, but I just met you for the first time. So, so that part of the, um, of coaching has been really, really, and it was totally unexpected. It was like, I have this community of girlfriends that 
I adore and um, make me better, you know, just by, you know, trying to mentor them to um, their coaching, through their coaching journey. And it, it is um, just a big plus of the whole coaching. Um, and the thing that I love about Beachbody is that you, it doesn't even matter if you're on somebody's team. I had um, last Saturday three coaches that live locally to me. Um, they we're not on the same team. None of us benefit by us doing well. And so, but we were masterminding, like, what are we going to do? Let's like share ideas. And so we, I shared something that I'm doing on a, with a free group with them. And one of them shared something that she's doing with her team, with me. We, you know, it's, it's like people helping people, whether it's coaches helping coaches, coaches helping customers, it's just like an amazing, an amazing thing that I found here. And so I want, I always want to share that. And so this was my, my chance to share that. And so I want, regardless of where you are in life and what you want to do, I want you to, if you're stuck, get unstuck. I want you to have the strength and the, and the, and the knowledge that you will be so much better if you do the work to get unstuck, okay? So whether it's stuck in your health or whether it's stuck in a marriage or whether it's stuck in your career, just do something. And if you wanna reach out to me or to the person who invited you here, um, whoever you need to help you, that's you just or a counselor in your hometown um a clergy person you know whoever it is you just need to take a step and do that because you only have one life you only have one life and i just i, lo I don't know if you follow his name's gary vaynerchuk gary v and i have shared some of his videos he's an amazing guy and he thinks 50 is the new 20 honestly we have so much. If you are joining this call and you are 49 or older, you know, you there's so much life left. You can start over. And that's what I love about this too, is I have so much energy, so much to give. I have no desire to retire because I, you know, honestly, you don't want to retire if you love what you're doing. You know, people who are waiting and clock ticking to retire, it's like, that's sad because they're, they're just, they're really not happy in their life probably. And I no longer dread waking up on Monday morning. I used to dread Sunday nights because I, I just was like, oh, I gotta get up tomorrow. I actually don't like Fridays anymore because it's like, oh, it's the weekend. <laughs> the weekend is no different than the week. So anyways, all right, so I've got 940, see? Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. So anyways, so what I want to tell you all here is that I am doing an open enrollment for my next coaching. There, we're doing a, a new coaching social. So we're really, really good at social media and working your business on social media. So we are have a brand new training starting. It's a coach Kickstarter boot camp, um, and that starts on Monday. And then a challenge group, the online fitness accountability group that I had success with that I think is the best thing since sliced bread um, that also starts on Monday so you can start immediately as a coach join the challenge group you can start as just the challenge group if I'm not into pressuring anybody to do anything they don't want to do and so it's however you want to do it I will say that there's a 30 day money back guarantee on all products. So you can actually use all the products, drink your Shakeology and it can be an empty bag and you return it and you get all your money back. You can quit coaching. There's nothing that ties you into this business. Okay. So there's nothing there. You know, to me, it's like, such, it's so no risk. I say, I tell people the only thing you have to risk is losing weight. <laughs> That's the only thing you're going to, you're not going to lose money because you can get it back if you don't lose weight and you, you, you are investing in your health. And so it's, you know, what are you going to do Buy buy medicine to fix you? Or are you going to invest in a fitness program that's going to make you strong and healthy so you don't get sick, you know? 
So to me, kind of a no-brainer, but that's just me. I've I've done I've gone on this journey, so I I know I know what it's like, and I know how good you can feel. So, anyways, um, all right. So I am done. 9.42, went a little bit longer, but I want to open it up for questions because I'm sure some people have questions and I would love to, you know, give you the opportunity to, to ask them and, and get the live on the spot answers. Does anybody want any like, do you not want a, a hot flash fan for your little iPhone? If you ask a question, I'll send you one. People can be shy. I know. And it can't just be like, what lipstick are you wearing? <laughs> I don't often wear lipstick. That is very unusual, but I did put some on. All right. So I guess there's no questions. Let me see. I'm going to scroll through. My son is a teacher and gets paid very little, but it's very, uh, that is so nice, Sharon. I, my, my, my sister is a teacher too, coincidentally. Um, and she loves her job. She has no desire. She's older than me. So she's 50, she's going to be 50. She just turned 59 and, um, she d has no desire to, to, to retire. She's a really good teacher too. Her students love her. Uh, John, I thank you. You're awesome too. All right. What, oh, what's your favorite part of coaching? Oh gosh. What is my favorite part of coaching? That's a hard one. Um, I guess, I guess my favorite part of coaching, if you're talking about mentoring, my favorite part of coaching is seeing my coaches succeed, seeing them, you know, get, you know, helping other people, seeing them reach some milestone in their business. I really, I love that. I love seeing stuff sink in and them start to like really get it and and then start to like really soar. So I love that. I love the mentoring aspect. And I think that's just because I'm a people person. I just love people. Um, but I do love, I do love, I'm kind of a ham and I, oh, in the very beginning, I will tell you, I was like, my first video, I was like this. I was like, uh, I'm Laurie, right? We had to introduce ourselves. We had like a three minute, like introduce yourself. I was so awful on video. I had never done a selfie. And so now I'm the selfie queen. And so I, I really have had fun, like really learning that and getting out there. So that's part of the coaching aspect where it's just me kind of connecting with people on social media. So that's been a real fun thing for me. Um, I like being silly. I only said that because I'm envious of him. Oh, so Sharon, what do you do? You must not like your job if you're envious of him. And he's a teacher. How much time do you think you invest in your business? So that is a good question. Um, you're going to get one of these. Um, and what you and Penny will too. Um, but, and I know she needs one for her hot flashes. Um, but, um, so invest in your business. So it's basically you get out what you put in. And so it's very easy to spend an hour a day doing very, if you, if you spend your time being very focused so I did, I work full time as a coach. I worked full time in another job and did this on the side for my first 18 months. And I was able to build a team and do what was necessary. Um, I have hit my, um, there's a thing in Beachbody called Success Club. And so the goal is to try to hit Success Club every month. And I've hit Success Club every single month since I've been a coach. So um, so it's just kind of where you just have to reprioritize your, your time. And you have to do your work in your kind of nooks and crannies of your day. But the majority of coaches, I mean, they all work at part-time. It's a part-time business that will get you to a full-time income. So um, so I, that's what my job is as your mentor or your coaches, um, whoever your sponsor coach is, um, is to help you figure out 
how to fit this into your your day if you don't have say you have a really busy job and you travel well then you do more focus time on the weekend so it just depends on you know where you can fit it in all right I have to work now so I'll look more into okay Christine thanks Oh, property manager. Ooh, yeah, you probably deal with people who get mad because their heat went out or their there's a leak in their bathroom or something. Could you tell us about the accountability group? I know people would love to know. Okay, accountability group. So, you basically have so I I mean, it depends on I have different accountability groups, so um, my I call it my VIP fitness accountability group. So that is something I really changed a little bit of how I do it this year. This year um, I used to do it where they were four weeks, most of them. I occasionally will have one longer, but it's usually just a special special group that I do. So generally speaking, um, it is four weeks long and you pick a program. I help you pick a program based on what you like, your interests, what kind of workout you like. Because um, if you don't like your workout, you're not going to be successful. So it's very important that we find a program that you would like to do. And then, um, and based on your fitness level. Although I will say most beach body, all beach body programs that I've ever seen have a modifier. So you can, if it's a for beginner intermediate, then you follow the modifier. So, so you, in the accountability group, so you get your fitness program and your Shakeology in a bundle. So the Shakeology is a big part of the meal planning. Um, so, and I, I highly recommend Shakeology because the people who do Shakeology do better on Shakeology. And like I said, you can return it if you don't like it, um, or you don't have success with it. And, um, some people, there's a little bit of an adjustment period. Some people, because it's got a lot of nutrition. Um, so some people's bodies are like, whoa. So, so I always just say like, just do half a scoop for the first week. Um, but anyways, I never had that problem. So, um, but it's, it's not that common, but anyway, so you join this group and I do a week of prep. So the first week is like, you know, goal setting, um, introduce yourself, um, commitment letter, um, going over the meal plan. I do a webinar with the people in the group. Um, we can answer questions and I go over how I meal plan and my tips. And so then that's the first week and then you start day one and you just start to do your workouts. And so, you check in the, it's an online group and so it's private nobody sees any of the messages but and so every day i do a post sometimes it's educational sometimes it's you know you know an assignment i ask you to do something like take a picture of your food or do a silly selfie or um, I try to have a contest a week, so we have prizes. And so it's all based on, you know, having this support and being a part of something that, like, you want to show up. And you don't, you feel really guilty if you don't do your workout. So, but you do your workout in at home when it's convenient for you. Some people work out first thing in the morning. Some people work out in the evening. Um, so it just depends on what works out for you. When I first started, I always worked out in the evening. Now that I work from home, I, a lot of times I work out in the middle of the day, sometimes in the morning. So, um, so that's kind of what it is. And then this year, what's different than last year is last year I did four weeks and then four weeks and then four. So I, every month I started a new group. This year I decided to do one group for a year. And so I have about 31, 32 people in my January group. And so I will be adding people uh, to my to the group in February. So on Monday, um, a whole new group will come in. So it's just going to get bigger and bigger and better over the course of the year. So, but it's going to, I'm going to do four week cycle. So we'll still have a start date and a stop date. And that way, if anybody falls off the wagon, then you can get right back on. And I am really excited about that because before people would drop off because I would start a new one and I would say, who wants to go on to my next group? And and some people wouldn't say they wanted to go on and I wouldn't bug them. So, you know, if you don't want to come on, I'm not going to make you this way. You have to say, I don't want to be in anymore. Or actually you can leave the group, you know, quietly and not announce it. So that way I feel like people are going to stay connected and more likely to have um, more success throughout the year. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. Did I answer your question? Any, any questions about the accountability group? Um, 
lots lots of success um we focus a lot on meal planning um the, you know nutrition is key uh if you don't have a handle on your nutrition and your food intake then you probably won't have much success um you know I, that's what i learned for myself is you know working out it will only get you so far um and there's a lot of things people do that they have no idea um little hidden calories here and there so it's really great to have the accountability of the group for that and to get ideas from other people as well so we share recipes and do some of that stuff too and i just kind of guide you you know beach body is huge and now there's beach body on demand and i highly recommend beach body on demand to everybody because they have this new all access and you can just like access um and you, you basically have access to all programs and so when you get bored with the program you can skip to another program it's very easy you have to have good internet um but it also has um fixate which is a meal planning it's a cooking show and they do meal planning videos and they have recipes and um grocery lists and so and it's kind of like this huge thing that's like oh my god where do i go where do i start where do i begin and so you know i can help you navigate that as your coach um and we and and, and you know i i pretty much um know where everything is i need to do a new video though um they keep changing it and so they keep adding new stuff to it which is great like they've added new 21 day fix videos you can't get those on the dvds they added new size videos they added new country heat videos so if you have beach body on demand you keep getting new stuff whereas if you have the dvds you don't get new stuff so all right yes did you oh looking forward to it good yes penny is going to be in my monday group all right so my new group i love new groups they're so fun all right guys thank you for joining me i hope you learned a lot and i hope um you know you know a lot more about me now that's for sure so all right good night